Now, the next one is the similarities between covalent and ionic compounds. One, they are formed by the transfer of electrons. They are formed by the transfer of electrons. You, you, saw why, you saw why compounds are being formed, so that the electrons will be stable. Okay, so this particular uh, a, a compound, both of them are formed by transfer of electrons. I told you that when compounds are formed, there's an exchange of bond. In essence, there's, an there's a breakage of bond. When these bonds are broken, electrons are transferred from one element to another. And when they are transferred, they hug themselves, they come together and form a particular substance that is called a compound. In that one says, <coughs> they have both binding energy. Yes, for force to be achieved, okay, for electrons to be broken, <coughs> for bonds to be broken, for for bonds to be broken and electrons to be transferred, there must be an energy. Without energy, there will be no force. So in that sense, they are using their molecular energy, they are using their molecular energy in this transfer of electrons. This transfer of electrons. The next one says they both have force of attraction. Yes. The force of attraction is a bond. In that sense, they both have bond together. They both have bond. The molecular uh, uh, the covalent compounds have molecular bond or covalent bond, while the ionic compounds have electrovalent or ionic bond. Now, they lead to the creation of a stable molecule. Yes. Both of them lead to the creation of a compound. Both of them lead to the creation of a compound. They lead to the creation of a compound. Take, for example, hydrogen and oxygen. They, they gave us water, a molecule of water, stable. Sodium and chlorine give us salt, a molecule of salt, stable. So both of them lead to the creation of a stable uh, molecule. Now, the next one we are going to see is a set of rules. There are a set of rules that enable us to create a compound. Set of rules that enable us to create a compound. Okay? Set of rules that enable us to name, name compounds. Name compounds. It is called chemical nomenclature. It's called chemical nomenclature. It's a set of rules to generate systematic names for chemical compounds. A set of rules that is set, okay? Rules that are set to generate systematic names for chemical compounds. I told you that you're going to know how to get uh, uh, names from chemical compounds. How do we derive their names when they give you the formula? How do you get their names? We are going to know, and that thing is called chemical nomenclature. Now, the next one is the rules of naming compounds. They say for covalent compounds, write the name of the first element and add the suffix "-ide", to the second element if there are two elements. Write the name. For, for covalent compounds, write the name of the first element and add the surface eyed to the second element if there are two elements. Now, let's take for example, um, NaCl. For example, NaCl. Now, this they say write the name of the first element. This first element, Na, is sodium. Sodium. And they say the second.